just want to thank you all for today uh, joining another episode of uh, Morning with Pastor Wales today. I know we had a great time last week. We had a, a wonderful time talking about the threat of lack of understanding. And today we're we going to sort of like continue on it, just uh, sort of like a touch some more part of just discuss about that today again and on also on some other general things. So uh, before we go too far, I, I believe you all have your coffee. If you have your coffee, let's let's have coffee together. Let's just uh, talk some what's affecting uh, believers' life. So let's 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 commit everything to the hands of God. Let's pray. Lord we thank you this morning. We bless and magnify your holy name. We give glory, honor, adoration unto you, for you alone is worthy of it all. Yes, Lord, no one can be compared to you. You are forever God, and we thank you for your love, for your divine presence, for your spirit in our life, above all, for your son Jesus that you gave. That we might have life and have life abundantly in you. We thank you for your love, this love that you have extended towards us. We just bless you. And we thank you for many brethren that is out there today. As many that are going to be joining. Pray that uh, great things, great wonderful things uh, you will do in their life today. So have your way, take preeminence control in the name of Jesus. Wonderful. Amen. People of God, um, once again, I want to welcome you all to um, Morning with Pastor Wills. It's a new day. It's a wonderful day. It's a day the Lord has made, and we're going to be glad and, be, and, be, uh, and rejoice in it. And I believe great things is already awaiting you today. You know, every every new day, every new day, every beautiful day, it's a, it's a, every new day, every beautiful day that the Lord has made, it's a wonderful time to have a great time, an awesome time in His presence. And not only in His presence, in our life generally, knowing that we have God in our life. So, you are welcome today. Have your coffee. I got mine today. Uh, I got my around. I think I'm taking to the black coffee uh, with sugar, no tea. I mean, no milk anyway, but with sugar, no tea. Uh, grab your coffee. Uh, let's do this. Let's uh, talk about coffee. Just want to touch on that again. Uh, I still talk about it. Uh, I remember, you know, I take Starbucks coffee. But I end up saying that Starbucks coffee, you can still compare it to the kind of coffee that I, I took in. Uh, I had a coffee at, uh, in, the, I think it was Croatian, I think it was Sabia. Yeah, I had a, a, a touchy coffee in Sabia. That coffee was good. It was really good. Actually, I would say that was my first time of, uh, having a, a touchy coffee. Touches coffee, yeah. Then uh, another time I had it in Croatia, in Zagreb over there. It was it is wonderful. It's one of the best coffee that uh, that really I really like, you know. So when I came back to the states, long time, you know, when I came back after that trip, then I uh, like when I went to Starbucks and have Starbucks coffee, I like ah oh, man, you can't still compare these two. To, to the Dutch's coffee, but nevertheless, you know, we're used to Starbucks, so it's still good. Anyway, so you all welcome today. I believe, great thing, I don't know what's happening in your life, right? I mean, for this while, but uh, today, no matter what might have been happening, but no matter what you, are, you might have been facing, um, God is right there with you. It's going to take you to the next level. Uh, but. As God is even taking us to the next level, understanding is very important. Understanding is very, very, very important. And so, and as believers, understanding is important, then we have to dig on that because 
it's not only that is important it's the, the lack of understanding is a big threat to our spiritual life i would say it's a strategic threat because it's a kind of threat that the devil can use regardless of how regardless of how anointed how um, how long you've been in the lord or how great you be or how big your ministry is or how famous you are or how known you know regardless of all that the devil knows that if he can get you on that lack of understanding you know when i say lack of understanding it's, it's not that you don't read the word of god it's not that you, but if you don't get the understanding of applying the principle of the word of god then you still lack of it so you know we're just going to continue you know we talked about it last week and i believe some of you uh will probably have some maybe if you have a, any question about it you can uh as well just uh, 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 post it up there let me see you can make a post of it there so that I can see it I believe oh, no, I don't know. Okay. okay and I'm going to also take that time to just take a shout out to as many that maybe joining out there I see I can see uh, a woman of God uh, some other people out there let's see uh, Oh, Teresa, Sister Teresa, Amoto, God bless you, and as many of you that are still going to be joining, uh, just give a shout out to you out after, if, I mean, as we continue. Uh, God bless you, I uh, know um, uh, Anike is right there, God bless you, woman of God, and uh, as many that still be joining. Anyway, like I'm saying, we have to look at all these as believer that knows that the devil is always out there putting putting i mean we are we are putting our lives even on the line for the kingdom and as you do it many people are looking at you people are seeing what you're doing and even not only that people are seeing what you're doing heaven is seeing what you're doing you know how you do those things do you do those things out of your uh, really out of your heart or are you doing those things that you're doing out of your desire are you doing all those things that you're doing out of uh, out of uh, not out of ignorance per se or out of uh, a hidden agenda if I put it there if I put it that way are you doing out of a hidden agenda you know when you have a, 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 a kind of ulterior motive over what you're doing that god i mean that the people didn't see or god can see you know the bible tells us about that you know but uh, let's go back to the to the basic of uh, of uh, this strategic trade that we're talking about uh you know last week i referred to the book of uh, amos and I try to read, let's read Amos together, you know, you know, like, uh, I, I mean, this time, we, uh, the, the discussion time that we're having, session we're having right now is not the time for teaching, but nevertheless, to just shed light as a certain thing in our life, you know. So, uh, look at what Amos said. I'm going to read it again. Amos chapter 4, verse 6. I'll read it after five. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, you know, and in quote, uh, of my my law, where I reveal my will because of you, the priestly nation. You see, it's as because of you, the priestly nation, have have rejected knowledge. I will also reject you from being my priest. Hmm. Since you have for, forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. That's the Amos chapter uh, 4 verse 6 and the Father. That's what God said. That's what the word of God said, okay? That's what called the attention. That's what uh, 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 make us, I mean, that's what we, we sort of like are looking at it as what people do to the Lord and God declaring his word that I will deal with you 
If God said, I will forget you, that's not good. Because forget you means I will take you out of my way. I will take you out of my blessing. You will become cause. And we don't want to be that. That's not what the people of God want to be. We want to be right there in the center of the blessing of God. Right there in receiving the blessing of the Father and dwelling in the Father, enjoying the Father our God. Experiencing His love every day that His love becomes part of our living. But God didn't see that in the people. He didn't see that in the people. Yeah, I got a new mold. My wife gave me that. It's a present yesterday. It was good. So, like I was saying, um, we, 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 God see what we don't see. Okay? God see our ways, our attitude, the things we do, what we do that is eating to the people. But we said, we are of God. We said, I mean, we have read the word of God. We are supposed to have understanding, but we are not applying that understanding. But what are we doing? We find people rather, instead of applying the word of God, the knowledge of the word of God, to what they are doing, they apply their own ways to twist the word of God, to use that word of God to benefit them. To benefit what they are trying to achieve for their for their personal benefit. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? When you begin to drive the wall of God to that way, when you begin to drive your spiritual life or your Christian life towards that, just using what God has put aside for his will, for his people, for good knowledge, for everything, and you take that and use it. Not to benefit the kingdom, but to benefit yourself alone. Thinking of you first, instead of God first, then it becomes a problem. That's what the people were doing at that time. You know, we talked about it last week. That's what the people were doing. That's what the priests were doing. And so, God didn't look at it that, okay, your children have committed sin. I need to punish them. Your, I mean, your daughters have come in and need to punish them. Your, your sons have come in and need to punish them. No. He's looking at it that you that have the knowledge to know better, you are the one that's even channeling, directing, promoting the sin that those ones are committing. <laughs> you see, that's the way he look at it and say, then. I don't need to punish those sin. I'm going to start because if I just say I'm going to punish these people on the sin, you might be covered because, I mean, because of your relationship with God, all those things. But it, 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 the word say, because of lack of understanding, that is you are not applying the right thing into the principle of God that you have learned, then you're going to be part of it. Everybody will be part of it. And then not only those ones that I know, the most Sensible one that's supposed to have the sense, they will be part of it. Hallelujah. And if you look at it, we talked about it last week, you know, in our discussion last week, that that's exactly what's happening now. You see, there's one thing that we also have to know there's nothing new on this surface of the world that has never happened before. I mean, when I talk in terms of what people have been doing or what maybe behavior or attitude or all those things. You may talk about technology, you know. But even if we say technology, we don't even know. Maybe there have been greatly advanced technology before that God has, that everyone has wiped it off. I don't know. But what I'm trying to say is that there's nothing new on the surface of this earth. Most things that happen just like a reputation. And that reputation may be taken into a different level, you know, doing it in a different way, in an advanced way. Because people are born, people grow, they lead, they, you know, they have a great life, fantastic life, and at the end, they die like a beautiful flower that end up, you know, plug away and dry off and gone. That's how life has been, generation to generation. So there's nothing really new. 
So God knows that uh, 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 people have done all this. And so, the same way the people are doing it at that time, that God has seen, the same way people are doing it even right in our own time. But we are in this dispensation of, of grace and better understanding of even of the, that, that God is really helping us. We have a spirit that helps us. We have help in the law than the way it was those days. And what's the help? The Holy Spirit is right there to guide us. But it is even in this dispensation that we see people rejecting that which the Holy Spirit is doing. In fact, if it's possible, they are ready to even manipulate the Holy Spirit. But thank God they cannot do that. Because he only answer to God is the Spirit of the living God. If not, this war, <laughs> I'll say the preacher out there, a lot of preacher. I'll say including myself, but thank God for his spirit. That each day, even if I take if, if I want to take any step contrary to you, he will book me and put me right. And because of his art that I have, the art of his love, I rather stick on the right day. But what are you saying? There's a lot, a lot, a lot of good people, a lot of good preachers, a lot of good women and men of God that started good, but after the time, the devil comes in and he's not going to bring sin to them. But what he's going to do? He's going to divert them in a way to disobey God or to begin to apply the principle of the word of God in a way that is not of God. And then they deviate. And when they deviate, what happens? God begin to look at them. You know, because the anointing is still there. You can, you can see the, the, you know, the way they pray, the way they do everything. It's not taken away. They continue with it. And so, nobody will notice what's happening. But there's the only way you can notice what's happening is that the manipulation begins to become obvious. And when the manipulation becomes obvious, then you can see that, oh, something is wrong. But even when it becomes obvious, it's not everybody that's going to see it. Because some people are just sucking into it. That, oh, it's a man of God. Oh, they take some man of God, a woman of God, they take them as God. So they don't even dare open their eyes to see whether this man is just saying something wrong or is taking them into the wrong direction. They won't dare even dare open their eyes to see it. That's why God is going to hold those leaders, men and women of God responsible, just like He's holding them responsible in that time. Because the people, they are supposed to know better. But they apply the word of God in the wrong way. They apply in a way to benefit themselves. And by doing so, they are causing even generation to deviate from the truth. The raising the generation that see lives as an alternative ways of living. I mean, as an alternative ways that still goes with the things of God. Because if you are if you are a leader that is out there and people and you can easily promote lies and do away with things that are untrue, what's gonna happen? Everybody will see you say, Oh, hmm, that's good. I mean, God can do with that. God can still do with that. <laughs> God cannot do with that. That's what they were doing at that time. And God refused to be, to, to be complicit with that. And so he said he would punish them. He didn't say he would leave the priest. He wanted to start with the priest. In fact, he wanted to really punish the priest. I'm praying my desire, my prayer, for every leader of the world of God, everyone, including myself, everyone that's ever lift up the world of God and preach and declare to the world. I pray that grace will be sufficient for them. I pray that God will, will, will not, I, I, I mean, I pray that God will forgive as many that are walking wrongly and, and by His power redirect and bring the truth to their hearts. You know, you know, the reason why I'm saying that is that I'm a kind of person that never believed that the, that the wicked should just die and perish. No, no, that's not my belief. I never believe in that. 
believe just like the wall of God say, that says he is not interested it's no, it does not desire the death of the ungodly but that the ungodly will come to the understanding of the wall of God that's what the Bible says I know some people rather see even their neighbor perish or friends or people they know perish because they're doing wrong thing that's not that's not the will of god if we can see that if we go back to that um Hosea, we can see that in that Hosea, he said he said if you the first part of it said my people are destroyed because of lack of no, uh, uh, knowledge of my of my law he said i where I reveal my will. You know, yeah, in the word of God, in God revealed his will. He revealed his ways. He revealed everything. And after getting that understanding of his way, of his will, then you now begin to manipulate that. Then you lack knowledge. Because you lack knowledge that God can destroy you. You lack knowledge that God can hold you accountable. You have knowledge that God is above all. You can see when people are manipulated. Look at, let, let's look at it. There's a part, uh, there's one, let, let's look at it. There's a Bible verse that, that talks about the wall of God. You know, I, I believe Ip, um, Hebrew, Hebrew chapter, two, uh, chapter 4, verse 12. Look at the way it put it. it said, For the wall of God is living and active, sharper than any two edges so said piercing to the divide to the division of soul and of spirit excuse me he said of joint and of marrow and discerning the thoughts and intention of the earth intentions of the earth oh man i love that part i love that part because the the, the, that part means that God is not only seeing what you're doing, He knows the intents of your heart, the intention, why you do that, your motive, everything, the things that anyone cannot see, He can see it. He knows the reason why we take that step. Even when your wife don't know, even when your, your children don't know, even when your, your other believers, your friends don't know, even when the people you're speaking to, even when they don't know, God knows the reason why you're taking that step. He knows the motive behind it. And that motive is what he's going to use to hold you accountable also. Because he said, he said, he said to the understanding, to the discerning, discerning the thoughts and the intention of the earth, the intent, you have not even finished doing it. But he knows what you want to do, why you want to do it, and what you want to accomplish in that. That's the best church you can ever see. Hallelujah. Hope you're having your coffee. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best you can ever see. I mean, the court system in this country and all around the world, I believe, lawyers, uh, judges, I believe, when they're facing any case, they're always looking for the motive, the intent of why did this person do this? Why did he commit this? But those things are clear and visible to God. He knows he don't need somebody to start putting A2, uh, A, B together or 1, 2 together to, to, to begin to line up all those things to find out why is he trying to do that. No. Before you even land, God knows why you're doing it and where you, what you want to get and where you when you want to get it and when you are about to get it. He has a full knowledge, full understanding of it. Oh, when somebody just prays it. You know, I love this God, man. I love him. So when, when, you, when you look at this, when you look at this, then you begin to see how people are doing, how people in our generation, especially people that people look up to, people that believe, I mean, that, that lead us, people that are supposed to be, I mean, Preachers of the wall of God, of the true wall of God, and the wheel of God. But every now and then, they just push things that benefit them, or things that benefit whatever their, their interests, and do all those things, and do all those things. 
and the people that are supposed to be true believers, people with souls all out there. Mind you, some of those souls are not stupid at all. Some of them have great knowledge, and they begin to watch and say, I know, yeah, I know. I need to do what this person said. I know I need to submit to the word of God. But this thing this person is doing, it, it doesn't it doesn't line up with the world is preaching. It doesn't line up with the wall of God. And when they see that, some of them laugh. I say, when is these people going to get it right? And then God is seeing what are the people that are supposed to be preaching the right wall are becoming an hindrance. To the soul winning, hindrance to the wall of God, hindrance to doing that which is right. Because people get disappointed. You remember last week I talked about uh, how people get disappointed. I believe the week before, uh, people are doing good, but some, uh, when they come to the church, they get disappointed of what people do to them or, or what they face in the church. And instead of the church being the help, they become a kind of an injuries for that person to really um, apply the word of God to his life or her life or to really enjoy the experience the Christianity or the, the, the value of the word of God so what are we trying to talk what are you what are we talking about what we're talking about is and we if we don't take care of this threat this lack of understanding when i say lack of understanding i'm not saying you don't know how to read the bible no i'm not saying you don't have the bible the word of god no but when you are applying the word of god in a wrong way in a way to benefit you you lack understanding because you lack understanding that that word is god and god will not we will we, we, we not be manipulated you can manipulate yourself how many people could have but you can manipulate god and when you see truth, and when you see lies, and the things that are not truthful, false, you know, when you see those things, we know that it is not in the direction of God. That, that, that's just the basic. That's the basic because those things are not hidden in God. They are not hidden in Christ. No, they are properties of the devil. They are trees of the devil. They are not of God. So when you begin to have that so much in your life, or your ministry, then you are keeping the properties of the devil in your life. Because when you doing all those things, you are walking contrary to the things of God. Because it's not of God. It's not of God. There's no how you want to do it. Maybe you try to lie those things to achieve another thing. You know, it doesn't matter. That thing is not the value of God. It's not the things that are supposed to be applied to the things of God. But that's what we say right now. That the church is totally deviating away from truth. I'm saying this because sometimes it just hurts me. I feel bad about it because truth is one of the great values that we have in Christ. It's one of the the things that hold us to knowing God, believe, knowing that God is truth in all things, that light cannot be found in Him. And now seeing people putting so much of their light taken to the to the altar of God, you know, taking it to the to the to the to the to the, to the highest level of Christianity, taking it to the highest level of the things of God. Then we're in problem. We are in problem then. But God knows his people and he knows the people that serve him. But, but looking at what we're talking about, I just want you as a believer to know that you need to stay in the truth and stay in the understanding of the word of God and applying the understanding of the word of God in your life. Because, you see, the devil... The devil won't be going around people that know sin. 
to make them to commit sin. If you okay what I'm trying to say, if you know sin, you know sin very well, you preach against sin, the devil is not going to come at you and start bringing sinful things for you to do. Oh, no, he's not going to do that. But what is he going to do? He's going to go in a different direction. He's going to bring the spirit of disobedience or pride. Okay? He's going to bring the things that you, that, that you, that you begin to puff in your spirit. Thinking that you know it all. It will, take, it, it, will, it will come against your own goodness. And it wants you to replace it with pride. And if, you, if, if, if he's able to subdue to that, or if he's able to, to, to if, you, if you are able to submit to those things, then the threat that he has over your life just increase because you just fall into the lack of understanding. Because if you have understand the word of God very well and apply very well, you will not know that that which you are eating in your heart that is not of God, you should not try to use it to manipulate the people. Because the people are of God. They are so valuable to God. They are like children before God. And we know what Jesus said. He said, he talks about the people who are hurting or denying this little one the ways of God. He said, ah, he said to be much better, you know, for them to put, uh, I mean, to put stone in their leg and throw them in, this, in the water than doing that. Because it's, it's just like abomination before the Lord. It's just grievous. It's not good. And that's exactly what a lot of people are doing. They stand on the way of salvation. If they extend the salvation of God to you. But why you tend to take it? They seem going to be the same people that stand against the way of your salvation. And try to, as you climb the, 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 the step of your, of your, of your, of the, of the, um, the fullness of that which is in the, the blessing of your salvation, they are ready to take, I mean, to, to, to shovel you off the step with their what, with their manipulation and their untruthful life that is not of God. God is truth. So when we look at this, when we look at this, we, we, we see that we are not, uh, if we look at that and we tend to align ourselves with it, then we are in problem. We are in big problem like that. So the best bet is not to align yourself or to separate yourself from those things. And I'll tell you, that's what I've, I've been doing when I begin to recognize what the people is doing, especially our leaders are doing in this dispensation. I've been around some leaders of the world of God like myself too, or even great one. But I see something still lacking many of them too. You know, it talks about love of God, but they don't truly love I mean, they don't truly ready to exercise the love of God. I've seen great men that preach the word of God in a powerful way. I see great men that talks about the things of God and when you hear it, your body may be shaking wherever you are. I still also see these great men and great women lacking the love of God. And the love of God is so important in our lives. It's so important. Because if the moment you begin to lack that, you truly lack in understanding. And the devil can utilize that as a threat against you. Because he will position other things for you and say, you know what? This one are more valuable than the love of God. Don't worry. You know, this one is so big. It's a threat to God. No. There's nothing like threat to God like that. When you walk in love, love of God is the totality of everything, the totality of the value. That's why, you know, I keep going back to that, and I know many of you know it. And the, even Jesus taught us that the Ten Commandments is all, this law is all summed together in just loving God, loving your God, obeying and loving your God, and loving your neighbor as yourself. 
That means what you don't want people to do for others, don't do it for yourself. No, uh, what you don't want people to do for you, don't do it for others. Yeah. What you know you can't take, don't give it to other people to take. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't give it to other people to take. That's why you can see some people, they can easily have the best thing for themselves and take the one that is not good and take it to God. Or they want to give something to somebody, they take the one that they cannot even have. They take it to others. I remember one day, and this is just, uh, uh, just add this, I'll just add it up, so you all can look at it to get out of it. That day, uh, we wanted to go and do um, homeless feeding. And, you know, we, we, wanted, to, we, we wanted to be quick uh, because we have a limited time at that time. We wanted to do something more more easy that we know, not easy per se, something that I believe I can take to. So I thought of myself, you know what? I want to go and feed these people. I want to go and do homeless feeding. We've been doing all that kind of feeding. But you know, I know what I have for breakfast. We want to go and give these people breakfast. Why not give them what I drive through Chick fil A to buy for myself for breakfast? I said, okay, that's what we're going to do, you know. So I decided to go, we, we go to, uh, I mean, order, make some order from that and get those things from Chick-fil-A, which is all that from Chick-fil-A we go to for the feeding. So what I'm trying to say is that I thought of it from what I can have for myself, what I have for breakfast, exactly what I used to have for breakfast, which is um, chicken brisket. That's what chicken biscuit is what I used to have for breakfast when I go to Chick fil A. And with, with coffee or with um, a drink. So that's exactly what I said, okay, that's what we're going to get. Um, that's what we'll be using to feed it. If we were doing breakfast, that's what we used to give to the homeless for the breakfast. You know? And uh, I found that somebody was a uh, long time when we first started. So I was telling him, oh, Pastor, no, that we shouldn't do that. Maybe we should just, let's just go get McDonald's. Let's just get these. Let's just get some stuff. The person was looking at it from the cost. I said, I, I understand the cost, but maybe some people will love McDonald's. But I won't, buy, I won't take that for myself because it's not rich enough. It's not this enough. I can't have it, you know. So if it's what I can have, I can't have. I cannot go give other people. I know this. I can stay. I can have it because I know it's good. It's nourishing. It's bad. You know. I'm not saying my donut is not good, okay. But what the person was saying is, uh, it's like scaling down to the most extreme little stuff. I said no, because I won't get that. If I'm gonna get from my, I'm gonna get this big stuff. I mean this kind of stuff. So, so what I'm trying to say. Here is a think of what you can do for yourself before doing for others. That is what the love of God is. That is what Jesus is leading us to. That is the understanding of God. When we lack that, then we lack understanding in general. Because if you if you can if you can lie for people, which you believe you don't want to lie for yourself, or you don't want to lie for your family, and if you can lie for people. Just to accomplish that certain things and continue to press that light, continue to push the people in the wrong direction just because of what you want to achieve, then that's lack of understanding and that is wickedness. That is wickedness. To God is wickedness. And don't ever, because that's that's what I discussed last week, don't ever equate that to, oh, this sin. Oh, you know, people like they always use that and say, oh, uh, but abortion is bigger than that. Don't ever equate it to that. Or, oh, this person went to raw. Or somebody went to, I'm just trying to think of anything. Somebody went, or, or, or somebody uh, 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 maybe steal somebody's stuff. Okay? They say, oh, that's sin because it's steal. Don't equate the manifestation of the love of God to that. No. If you lack the love of God, you lack everything. Regardless of the one you think you're doing that is right. That means you, you are being 
you've cut short of that which is right. You didn't do the fullness of it. The fullness of it is to walk in the love of God. See what you can have for yourself. Can you take it? You know, last week, I, may, I think I mentioned um, how people were put in cage. I mean, children are put in cage a long time, you know. And some people celebrated it. How on earth would you celebrate it? Can you put your kid there? Can you put your kid in there? Can you allow that to happen to your kids? Look at it. Jesus wants to tell us, I think if I remember it, uh, it just came to my mind now. I think he told us about the story of um, a preacher, uh, uh, no, a, a man that was traveling, I mean, that, that was robbed on the way by arm robber, and he was left on the way to die. You know, the eating, the stole it, steam from that man and, and hid it. And but when Jesus was describing that, he said, why the man was laying on the floor dying? He said, people pass. And he deliberately mentioned that people pass, people who, like, like priests, you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees said they passed there. They saw the person. But they said, oh, no, I can't touch that person. I have something to go and do. Oh, oh I, I have to preach today. I can't do anything with that. It's not my part, you know. They refused to do anything to be of help, okay? Because let's put it this way. Maybe the person, maybe they have looked at it and what they want to go, go do is more valuable to God than that person on the ground that is dying, okay? Let's say that's the way they look at it. So they have a reason to leave that man and just go do that on the road. But Jesus said there was a man who was traveling and he saw, he said, no, he came and helped. That man is not even a Christian. He's not even a believer. He just have a heart to do good. And he decided to help that person, take, him, take the person to the hospital or the, pay for the, the cost of whatever is going to be used to. Uh, put that person right to help to do the treatment and the person left and he said I will still come and check okay and Jesus was pointing to that that see the life of that person see what good that person do so if we have understanding if we don't lack understanding we will know that he's telling us that if you think what you're trying to do is so important to God that you try to go do that and you left the one that touched the heart of God then you still lose it, you miss it, because that one also is important to God. Because you will have rendered help, you will have shown mercy and shown love, but you refuse to do that. So that's the kind of things that we have to look at as believers. But people are not looking at that. They look at what they think it could benefit them. When I say benefit, benefit comes in a lot of ways. It may be the things that they think it could benefit them and make them more popular. It could benefit them and make their ministry so big. It could benefit them and make them be more, uh, I mean, uh, blessed physically, financially, materially, okay? Or in any form. But those things are not things that touch the heart of God. Um, you know, we we'll, we'll talk about the motive. I talk about the motive when we read, uh, I think, Hebrew. That Hebrew 4 that I read. So, when, when you look at motive of people, the motive that people have in doing things, you know, we know that people, in most cases, or in many cases, they have this ulterior motive of doing things. And those ulterior motives they have, is only God that knows it. People may not know it. But they themselves, they know. The moment you know that you have a ulterior motive to achieve certain things, regardless of what could happen to the life of the people, then you are walking in wickedness. No matter how you can preach, no matter how you can, no, no matter how you think you're serving the Lord, then you are haunting the body of Christ. You're not doing the right thing. Then you lack understanding. Because if you can have the ulterior motive to lie, to, to, to have underlining reason, 
that will not benefit the body of God, but benefit you to do a thing which you know that thing you're not doing in the right way, but just because you want to achieve that, then you are in trouble. So we need to watch that. And that's how manipulative spirit comes in. You know, manipulative spirit, I, I'm touching up this manipulative spirit every now and then because these are threats to spiritual life. They are underneath that lack of understanding. Because if you have the right understanding, you will never or dare do that. You will never dare do or dare try to manipulate people. You do it because you lack of understanding. And those things, they are threats to your spiritual life, threats to your ministry, threat to you gaining the kingdom of God. And, you know, there are ways you can easily know that also. Because, you know, I, I remember somebody asked me one time, said, how will you know when somebody is manipulating or deceptive or doing all those things? How will you know when it's not really clear? Or how will you know this person might be doing that? Because, you know, some people are so, they're, sweet, they're so sweet-talking people. By the time they begin to talk, they're like marketers. They can sell water, pure water, water that you can go and buy in your tap. They can sell it to you at a very high cost, tell, thinking it's not just regular water. They can sell white paper for you as red paper. Because when they begin to talk into it, you will forget, oh, the paper you are holding is just white, but they call it red for you. Are you just going to buy it? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So those people, the same thing, they brought that same way to the body of Christ, to the things of God, and they sort of like a, when they're doing that, they're doing it in, in a way that they believe, oh, okay, I'm not doing something bad. I'm just trying to get the attention of these people. You're getting the attention of those people, you are still manipulating it, you know, which is not extremely good. So when the person was asking me, how will I know how they can I discern this? I said, when you see something that is over, when their reaction is over, oversized over certain thing. That everything that you touch about that day, the reaction of the people is just so much of that person, so much against that. Then look at that thing very well. Put that part under the microscope. Because that's where you're going to find, that's where you're going to find whatever that could be manipulated easily. Because when somebody is manipulating something, the person defends that thing so much. Yeah, when people manipulate certain things, they become more defensive over that thing. They, they just, that thing becomes things that, oh, when you talk about it, they give you this, they give you that, they give you so many reasons, so many, you know, that make you to say, okay, 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 I give up. Those are the places you need to really look at very well. You know, like one time I remember, I was talking, it's been, I think it's about 10 years ago or more than that. Don't forget your coffee. Um, I was, we were talking with one uh, man of God like that, was one a bishop like that. Uh, over the internet, we connected. Uh, we get connected over the internet, connected with my ministry, and we're talking. Well, each time we talk about, we talk, we, I mean, each time we chat or talk, this person always tend to be defensive of people who drink, taking alcohol. You know, and my part of it, I'm just talking about something else, okay? So just get it. My part of it is that I'm not against you drinking alcohol. I'm not saying when you, you know, some people will say, oh, drinking alcohol is sinful. No, I'm not saying it's sinful to you, no. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. If you want to drink alcohol, go drink it. But you know what? you the one that we're going to lose because you're going to lose the Spirit of God. <laughs> So you have to wait which one is more better for you. So um, to just talk about what I'm trying to say, the, 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 the man, every time we're talking about thing, it just at no, it, out of out of blue, you just bring that word. It will just keep bringing that word of ah, 
yeah, you know, the Bible say you should, you know, you can take little alcohol and this is, I said, why this person, why this man always talking about, we're not talking about alcohol, why is he bringing it here? We're not talking about wine, why is he bringing it? Strong wine, why is he bringing it into our conversation every time? So I begin to deal it up. I'm also I'm the kind of person like I can. I'll talk into maybe hearing more about what you want to talk. Yeah. So I begin to talk this man into maybe hearing more reason, all those things. And before you know, he gave me a reason. What was the reason? He was saying, you know, sometimes long time in my life, um, I was having one uh, kind of uh, sickness and this and that. And the doctor recommend that I have to take a strong alcohol um, wine so that it can really help in the treatment and all that kind of stuff. So he ended up taking and taking and taking that and he take it in a way that people see him as a as a man of God, as a preacher, as a as, as a bishop of church, taking so much of the strong stuff. So he's defending that area every time. When somebody talk about it, he just defend it. So I said, okay, okay, I now see what this man is talking about, you see? So that's an example of what I'm trying to say. When you see somebody so defensive of certain things, just let that person open up very well to hear what is he doing that. That's how you can somehow see when people begin to manipulate sometimes. Just throw more questions in those areas. Bring some stuff that will open that area up. Before you know you, you they will end up saying things that will make you to know that, oh, I see the reason why this person is trying to go this strike or why it's manipulating. And you can even see that manipulative spirit in display very well. So, I just laugh over it. But I make the person to say, I'm not against you drinking your strong alcohol. I'm not saying to you that say, taking it is, is sinful. No. But the point I'm trying to say is that if you take so much of it, I mean, if you're a believer and you're taking that, are you going to be able to have your saints and your, and your real self to walk in the Spirit of God? How is the Holy Spirit going to move and flow in your life? When even you want to pray for somebody and you say, in the name of Jesus, why are you trying to pray for that person? Everything that's coming out from you is a bread of the strong alcohol you've taken. How, how does it sound to you? So if those things sound not good to you, then that tells you that it is not good for you. It's not the right way for you if you really want to dwell in the love of if you really want to dwell in the Spirit of God. Because anything that can take control of you, that will not make you to be in your right sense, is not good. It doesn't matter at all. Even if it's food that will make you not to be in your right sense, that food is not good for you. Because you won't be in your right sense to do that which is right. So that was my, that's my conclusion of that. You know, I'm not going to be tagging things to you and say, this is sin, this is sin, this is sin. The first part of sin is, if you know walking in love of God, then you're falling into the sin, that's it. If you can really see people as yourself, that's already, you already, you already fail the commandment of God already. <laughs> so, um, I believe, I be, uh, I, uh, last week, I talked about, I mean, I, I answered some questions. Um, this week, I didn't, uh, I didn't really have anybody posting questions, but I said, uh, so I just left from last week. But I think I'll leave that for another time so I can um, still hold on if many of you will want to put, send in a question that I can answer. Okay, so we still do that. And I, apart from that, some of the, most of the team, I got in my inbox, they are not question per se, they are more on like a prayer request. So uh, I don't want to be reading prayer requests, like a kind of question and answer. So I better answer question, I mean, question that are, that are asked than um, prayer requests. So most things that many of you are posting or sending my inbox, we are more like prayer requests. So those prayer requests, we're praying over it and you have your victory because God is giving you victory. God is your victory and you will have your victory in life in Jesus' name. Victory over everything, over everything in life. Yes, victory is certain for you because our victory is in Christ. So, to wrap it up, 
we also ask to know that anger also another threat anger the threat we talk about anger in the past anger is really a threat to a spiritual uh, to your spiritual life we still come on the lack of knowledge because if you have the um, lack of understanding if you have good understanding you know that you have to deal with your anger you know and likewise pride pride is a very big one it's very very big one and that one i tell you it's enter into a lot of believer pretty easy than committing any other sin pride because when you are when you are manif manifesting that in life you will not even know that you're already out of the will of god that you're already out doing things that god is not expecting you to do you think you're still doing the right thing that's a big threat that pride pulls to the spiritual of a life of everyone of us as believers you know when you begin to have that spirit that mindset of i did it it's me it's me that i did it that means you already bring god to a lower level and you above that's exactly what the devil did in the past before he was driven out of heaven he want to elevate himself above god and that's what people do that's why the bible says we should humble ourselves so we should humble he said when you humble yourself before god god will exalt you exaltation come from the lord he's the one that will exalt us elevate you but when you begin to exalt yourself ahead it will humble you so when we allow pride then we're walking in that line that god will humble us which is more better for god to exalt than to humble us so you need to watch out be humble in all things. Don't allow pride in your life. Don't allow. Don't allow pride. It's pretty easy for people that are men and women of God, leaders, to fall into that pride. That trait. It's really alive for every uh, believer, especially leaders. I watch over it every time. Because you know, example are people. Maybe I have to put this. I'll talk about it another time when people are overwhelmed with maybe they get a response on facebook or twitter or or the social media before they know pride gone into it because they are trying to feed the people they're trying to stay in that cloud and with the bubble of that cloud they're enjoying it and feeding it they can use anything to feed it and then pride comes in yeah because the pride is from what people are saying, no, when people are hailing you, oh, my sister, oh, my brother, I like you, oh, oh, man of God, yeah, you say you're on point, you know. And before you know, the persons begin to go into a little level of, you know, that bubble in that cloud, and you begin to allow pride, allow pride. And when you begin to talk the right thing for such people, sometimes they look at it like, oh, no, just leave me. I have this, this, I get in control. But sometimes we don't get in control. Because pride has stepped in. You can see it going on in a, see 